what is up everyone? It's Jelly Gray here and welcome back to another video. So today I'm doing a new format of video here on the channel with a topic that I don't really speak about, right? We got bleach. So a few of you folks asked my thoughts on bleach and whether I've been watching it. And yes, I have. I'm about 90 episodes into the anime. So I decided to give my thoughts now that I'm about 25% done and maybe make this a regular thing as I progress through the anime and eventually the manga as well. So Bleach so far is an interesting anime with intriguing power scaling aspects and a pretty entertaining narrative. So admittedly early on, for the first few episodes, it was kind of dull. The action and the overall storyline wasn't very appealing to me, but that quickly changed when Ichigo had to go to the Soul Society to save Rukia from being executed for her crimes according to the Soul Society. It became quickly and efficiently more entertaining once Ichigo was in the Soul Society and you got to see captains and lieutenants and the Soul Society at large and then battle Ichigo and his friends, Chad or Hime, etc. Now Ichigo is an individual who quickly progresses in power on the power scaling chart, I guess you could say. He goes from being able to barely deal with measly hollows at the beginning of Bleach to contending with Kenpachi about 50 to 60 episodes in. That's a quick jump in comparison to animes like Dragon Ball and Naruto, right? With captains, at least to my knowledge, being the epitome of Soul Reapers and Ichigo being a substitute Soul Reaper, being able to contend with someone of that caliber, it's quite impressive, power scaling wise, right? He's able to stalemate Kenpachi, and then a few episodes later, he's stalemating Byakuya with a Bankai. With a Bankai taking a long, long time, many years for a Soul Reaper to even be able to wield. And Ichigo is able to do it much quicker than that. Right. So there's definitely some parallels between him and Naruto as far as training and how quickly they improve. Kind of reminds me of Naruto a little bit when he learned the Rasen Shuriken. Right, with the Shadow Clones, he was able to learn it like that. With Ichigo, he just seems to have an act for improvement. Like he's gifted. Maybe it's genetic. Maybe it's mental. But he has this trait where his, where his improvement is vastly superior to the average Soul Reaper. Or even captains, for that matter, who are shocked to learn that he has a Bankai. Or Byakuya, specifically. So, the power scaling aspect is intriguing. Ichigo is an intriguing protagonist. He has the typical personality of a shonen protagonist right like naruto he has this sense of justice he's a morally righteous individual at least in comparison to most within that verse and in most anime and his sole purpose seems to be just to make the world a better place right to make the world a better place now as far as complexity i wouldn't say he's as complex of a character as someone let's say like itachi or naruto or vegeta for that matter but he is an intriguing character and I do enjoy seeing him progress as a soul reaper and, and as a character right with his experiences he's building character he's gaining experience and becoming a better combatant within the bleach verse now the way power scaling works in bleach is pretty interesting to me as well right with spiritual pressure being the gauge for someone's caliber as a soul reaper or a hollow or a bount or a quincy whatever the case may be for the specific combatant we're we're talking about here right and Spiritual pressure can be can can be compared to chakra in Naruto or Ki in Dragon Ball, right? It's the it's the substance that gives you power, right? Well, what's also intriguing to me are the Sanpak toes, right? Ichigo's Sanpak toe and him need to at least so far as far as where I am, they need to gain better chemistry and work in sync for the Sanpak toe to be at its full power, right? For the Sanpakuto to listen to Ichigo better and really show its full power. So, from what I've seen, the best way I can recapitulate the kind of relationship that a Soul Reaper needs to have with the Sanpakuto is one where chemistry is good, both mentally and physically. And one of the coldest moments in Bleach was when Hollow Ichigo came out, which is yet to be explained exactly. He seems to get a huge boost in power. When Hollow Ichigo comes out, Hollow Ichigo saved him a couple times so far. Say it helped him against Byakuya, and it also helped him against one of the Bounce. Right, so because I'm on the Bounce arc right now, so far, 
So that is also very intriguing. I'm actually I'm very interested to see where, how that's explained and how that's further expanded on, right? So that I can extrapolate some more information from that as well. Now, the most polarizing figure so far is quite possibly Aizen, more so than Ichigo or Kenpachi for that matter. Aizen seems to have his own goals, and they seem very intriguing. At first, he seems like this, mel this mild-mannered, very righteous individual that's very loving. You know, he's showing love to his lieutenant, whoever the individual was that was very drawn to him. And then we learn that he's malicious and that his intentions all along were more so pernicious, right? They're more so pernicious and he wants his own power, right? He wants his own power. And he even seems to get a kick out of others suffering in some way, right? It's like he enjoys being invidious towards others. He enjoys being invidious in situations. He, he gains arousal from seeing others bow down to him or realize their inferiority, right? It really is why he seems to be a very, very good villain, right? So he has the right personality. He has the right nature as a character and Aizen definitely has caught my eye right away, and I barely even seen him. Right? I saw him fake his death, right? and then he flips the script and ends up betraying the Soul Society. He still he steals this sort of relic that I think is going to give him power, and he leaves the Soul Society. Right? He he fodderizes one of the captains that try to stop him. He seems very very powerful. Um, I'm definitely intrigued to see where that goes and what he becomes. I know that he's one of the most appealing and most revered characters in Bleach and in all of anime. I mean, he's compared to Madara regularly, right? So I could see why that is. Not just power scaling wise, but as a character, I could see exactly why that is. He's very intriguing. So he's definitely one of the characters that quite possibly my favorite so far. He might be my very favorite character right now in Bleach. So overall, the narrative is interesting, right? Ichigo just wants to make the world a better place. There's just never ending battle between these distraught souls, the hollows, and then the soul re the soul society with the soul reapers, right? That are trying to protect the world of the living and their own society. And there's this never ending battle of evil versus good or distraught versus order. Chaos versus order is the best way I could put it, right? That's one of the thematic aspects that glare to me more than anything. Chaos versus order, right? And Aizen wants to threaten that very cycle he wants to transcend the cycle it seems like right he leaves to what it seems is the world of the hollows i don't know exactly what the case may be but it seems he wants to blur those lines between chaos and order he wants power beyond that of any hollow or any soul reaper that's what i extrapolate from his actions and his character right that's why he seems so polarizing right he seems to want to transcend this cycle that has been going on for quite some time from what I can observe. And Ichigo is a, being the protagonist, wants to continue helping others and just stopping the distraught souls and keeping order, right? Keeping order. It's very interesting, right? Is it as polarizing and interesting as that, as the plot of maybe Naruto? Not quite so. It's not as complex or in depth, right? I don't quite think Ichigo is as complex of a character as Naruto or, let's say, Vegeta from Dragon Ball. Not quite, but he is intriguing. The plotline is intriguing as well. And I'm just very intrigued to see where it heads. You know, I'm, I'm only about 25% in, right, 90 episodes in. And I definitely want to see where it's going to be headed. Now, if I were to give criticism, right, the power scaling progression of Ichigo seems a little far-fetched. I mean, he goes from struggling with hollows that don't seem that powerful to stalemating Kenpachi, who apparently is the best combat captain in the Soul Society. And that's only like 50 episodes in, right? If captains are the epitome of what it is to be a combatant in the Bleach Verse, which is what I extrapolate from what I've seen so far, then that is quite far-fetched that he's got that level of power. I get it. They got to make the plot entertaining and the plot makes sense. You got to have Ichigo go in there and get his ass whooped, right? Because then it would be boring and not suspenseful or thrilling. So I understand the appeal emotionally, but logically to me, it's like, okay, 
He's a substitute Soul Reaper. He had 10 days of training. And he's able to fight someone the caliber of Kenpachi. Immediately when he gets there, he fights, I believe, a lieutenant. If I'm not mistaken. He fights the lieutenant. I believe it was a certain division. Either that, he was a third seat. But he's able to beat the guy in battle. And I do get this Saiyan vibe that he gets stronger as he fights, it seems like. Kind of like a Saiyan. Right, Saiyan improves from battle to battle. Ichigo seems to be similar in that nature. Like his progression is quick. Maybe even quicker when comparing it to Dragon Ball. I mean, someone like Goku, right? Goku took, in real time, decades to reach the level of a god to contend with someone like Beerus, right? Battle of the Gods, that came out, what, 2015 or something like that? And Dragon Ball has been airing since 1984, around there, if we're talking about original Dragon Ball. So it took a long time for him to reach that level. Hundreds of episodes, I'm assuming. While well, Ichigo reached a level of a captain in 40, 50, 60 episodes, which is nothing in comparison. Naruto to reach, you know, the level of KCM took hundreds of episodes. You know, to reach the level of KCM 2 or 6 Path took hundreds of episodes. So the power scaling progression is much quicker, at least from my estimation. Maybe I'll be mistaken and he, he really is just fodder com compared to 200 episodes later. We'll see. But so far, it seems a little far-fetched to me. It's like, where is the earning of this power? Yeah, he did train. I get it. We see a little bit of his struggles and his trials and tribulations. We do see that, but it's not long and enduring, right? It's not a long and enduring process that he goes through. It's, it's tough, right? He's training with the former Squad 12 captain, and he has to go through some trials right, where death is involved, to be fair. But it was in a matter of days, literally. Goes to the Soul Society, and he's able to contend with captains. All right now, it's not a huge, you know, nick on the anime. It doesn't destroy it or make it bad. It's a very good anime. All right now, a character I've would I really wanted to see battle was Yamamoto. Yamamoto seems, I mean, he's the commanding captain, right, or the captain commander, and he was going to fight two captains simultaneously when he thought they were committing treason, right. I really wanted to see that, or Yamamoto versus Aizen. Obviously, Aizen left right away with the other captains that joined him, um, but I really wanted to see what he's capable of. Both of them. That would have been a probably a powerhouse fight, powerhouse fight, no no doubt about it. But yeah, so far anime's been good, very intriguing. Like I like I said, the power scaling aspect is very interesting. Learning more and more about it. So currently on the Bount arc. I know that's filler. I believe that's not in the manga, if not mistaken. I might start skipping filler. I think the bell arc might be my last filler. I'll just skip to the main plot line. Um, unless you guys recommend I continue, then maybe I'll continue the filler. But I want to get to Aizen. I want to get to all that, you know, to the nitty gritty of it all. So overall, I'd give Bleach so far an 8 out of 10, which is a solid rating, right? It's a solid rating. The plot, pretty good. It does get dull at times, sometimes, but overall the plot is pretty solid. All animes have flaws in the plot. No plot is perfect. The power scaling aspect, very intriguing in my opinion. Villains, well the main villain, Aizen, extremely polarizing. He might be the shiniest aspect of it all so far. Him and Ichigo. He's just very polarizing to me personally. But yeah, that's my thoughts so far on Bleach. And as time goes on, and I finish the manga and the anime in its entirety, I'll be able to extrapolate more information, power scaling wise, thematically, narratively, and eventually hopefully make some content on more narrow and specific aspects of Bleach. Maybe inverse matchups that we didn't see, or breaking down how strong someone is as time goes on and I become more well versed in the literature of Bleach. I hope to do that and extrapolate more information. So, yeah, folks, let me know your thoughts on this video. Do you like this format of video where I kind of show images and myself? Or do you like where it's just the voiceover? Let me know. I'm trying to experiment with formats for you guys. Whatever is more aesthetically pleasing, please let me know. And let me know if you enjoy this kind of video where I give my takes on animes, right? Maybe I'll do that for other animes that I begin to watch in the future as well. All right, so let me know your thoughts on that. Any feedback is well received and appreciated. But that's going to wrap it up, folks, and I'll catch you in the next video. It's Jay the Grace signing out. Peace.